3.2b effective surveys part two. So now we're going to talk about uh, principles of proper surveying, types of surveys, and modes of delivery. Okay, so a lot of the start here is just going to be reading. So tips for designing an effective questionnaire. Okay, when designing a survey, it's important that it's straightforward and easy to complete. You must also know how to design and conduct an effective and fair survey in order to accurately analyze the data. Okay, so people don't want to take your survey if it's not straightforward and if it's not easy. And then also it has to be fair so that it's accurate or else the results are useless. So following these steps, follow these steps when creating an effective and fair survey. So you first want to state the purpose of your survey. You want to provide instructions for answering the survey. Keep the questions short and clear. Ask questions that are easily answered. Um, you don't want people thinking for too long or debating or putting it down. Uh, ensure your questions are not biased. If providing a list of possible answers, cover the entire range of answers, but keep the list short. Um, we usually say A, B, C, D. All right. Make sure your questionnaire flows. Uh, use plain English. Okay, don't be too wordy. Avoid asking for personal information um, unless it's important to the study. So personal information is if you ask somebody's name and then like ID or something it's that doesn't really that's not important to the survey and people will be reluctant to answer or maybe like if you ask them for their occupation or where they work or how much money they make they may lie about that because it's personal okay and then you also want to like test the survey if it was like a real survey Okay, so three principles in proper surveying. So uh, we're going to start with ethics in surveys. The introduction must inform participants of the intentions of the survey. Okay, respondents must be willing. So you can't hold somebody against their will. They have to want to do it. Okay, names of the participants must be kept confidential. So sometimes, most times, you don't even ask for it. Confidential. Okay? And personal information must be kept private as well. Okay? Uh, design for honest responses. So that's a big thing. You don't want people doing your survey and then lying because then the results are inaccurate. So if, answer, if answers are kept anonymous and confidential, Participants are more likely to be honest with their responses. In multiple choice questions, put cues. Okay, include such as um, include such as do not know, not applicable, or other. Like you know, like those those other responses as responses. So respondents have an option. That is not part of the given list. If using rating scales, make sure they're clear and offer a range of ratings. So um, from zero to 10 or like, extremely like, do not like, right? That's a rating scale. So just offer a range of ratings. Make it easy to continue. Okay. You do not want to ask too many questions of the same type consecutively or force the respondent to think hard about the responses, right? You want it to flow. Ask more difficult or sensitive questions near, near the end of the survey and in a manner that does not encourage the participant to lie. So very neutral, very, or very approachable. Okay, we also want to eliminate bias. Avoid questions that lead the respondent to a particular answer. or contain words that bring to mind negative images. Okay, post questions or scenarios that are neutral to avoid bias.
proposed questions or scenarios that are neutral to avoid bias that favor certain cultures or ways of life. Okay, so, um, if your questions have something to do with culture, then it's going to be difficult for individuals who are not of that culture, and it's not going to make sense to them. Okay, if choices have a neutral or a natural order, such as yes, no, or like excellent, very good, good, use that order. Consider the mode of delivery. Is it a personal interview? Um, are they being asked these questions over the internet, telephone, mail? that is most appropriate for the types of questions being asked. Okay, example one, identify which principles of surveying are not being followed in each example. Okay, so in a telephone survey, the, the surveyor immediately began asking the respondent questions without indicating that a survey was being conducted. Okay, so this is against ethics. You have to inform the intentions and you have to have willing participants. B. At the end of an internet survey, the following statement was given. By pressing finish, you agree that the information you provided can be shared with our sister companies within the corporation. Um, the information will be used for marketing purposes only. Okay, again, ethics. Okay. Everything should be kept confidential and private. Okay, and then also be anonymous and confidential. Okay, they shouldn't be sharing your information. Which type of race of oh radio station do you listen to? Rock, easily listening, country, or other? Okay, so there's a bias here. Okay, because this question leads to um, one, two, or three, right? Usually, when you're like oh rock, easily listening, or country. Usually when you, you identify one that you like decently like, you just choose it rather than other. Okay. So we want to make sure that there's enough options and maybe uh, like fill in the blank, short form blank. Okay. How do you rate your server? Excellent, fair, poor. Okay. So there's not enough options here. So see, there's a bias. Okay. We have to ensure there's enough options. E, a survey asks the question, which team do you think will win the Stanley Cup, the wonderful Ottawa Senators, or the less impressive Toronto Maple Leafs? Okay, so this is C. This is bias as well. This is like a leading or a loaded question. Okay, leads you the responses, puts in those certain words there. Okay, after introducing a survey about a favorite ice creams, the survey asks the respondents age, race, weight, and diseases. I would say that um, a bias could come from this because people may lie about these. Also, um, if you talk about ethics, only ask questions that pertain to your survey. Only ask if relevant. Okay, it could be relevant. Okay, a survey asked the question, how fast was the car going when it smashed into an unex unexpected van? C, again, bias, loaded question. Okay, 
mode of delivery of a survey. So we're going to name one advantage and one disadvantage of each of the following modes. Okay, so personal inter interview, like what's good and what's bad about this. So first, it's personable. Okay, you can ensure that the respondent knows the question and, and um, answers all questions. Knows, answers, all questions, cues, okay, instead of them leaving something blank. The disadvantage is uh, they may want to save face, so maybe like a pride thing, and perhaps lie or omit, right, because you have to face it like head on, so depending on the question, okay, so internet something good is it's anonymous and when stuff is anonymous a lot of people tell the truth um it's also cheaper right money wise cheaper and you can get like an array of people okay internet some people may lie or not respond Lie or just like just click answers just to get through it. Okay, telephone, so it's convenient and cheap. Okay, um, and you can kind of reach a lot of people, right? Not as much as the internet, but you can reach a lot of people. Okay, disadvantage, um, the time or people hanging up or like, oh, or like you call them, there's no answer. People are working. Okay, mail, an advantage of mail. Um, People can do it um, at their on their own time. People can answer on their own time. So there's no rush for it. It doesn't need to be right now, like a telephone call. Okay, but a disadvantage is it's a lot of money for postage, and it's time consuming. Okay, last one. There are five types of questions that can be used in a survey. Okay, so all the types of questions are below. Give an example of each survey type that you can relate to a cellular telephone company. Okay, so I'm going to type this one out. So dichotomous, so difficult. But basically, if you look at DI, should really rehearse that one. If you look at the word DI, it's DI, so like two, so there's, um, there's just two answers. True, false, yes, no, okay? So you can say, do you have a cell phone? Very easy, yes, no, okay? Specifically, do you have an iPhone? Right? Um, we can use multiple choice, so limited and number of predefined answers. So we can say, what is your primary use for your cell phone? And we can go A, uh, internet, B, calling, C, um, apps, D, we'll put other. Okay. Rating scale. So we can say regarding customer service at, um, let's just say call zone, how would you rate call zone? And then here, say we can have. Um, Zero being very unhelpful. Okay, 
to 10, which means very helpful. Okay, because then they have from 0 to 10, so they have like 10, well, 11 options. Okay, now completion. So completion is kind of like fill in the blank. Uh, what is your favorite app? So you, we don't actually give any answers. We just completely ask them for their for them, them to think. So we don't actually leave them in any answer. See, multiple choice kind of leads you to the internet calling apps other, whereas completion allows you to think for yourself. And then we have open ended. So how can let's say call zone improve? their service to you. Let's say that. Open-ended and you just answer freely. Right? Completion is like fill in the blank is kind of more like a one word. Single response. Whereas open-ended you can write forever. 